So this was first reported Wall Street Journal. Here's the headline. If war comes, will the U.S. Navy be prepared? KP McFarland, she's a sailor, former Deputy National Security Advisor, served in the Trump administration. KT, good morning to you. Thanks for coming back here. Answer the question. Is it prepared? Nope. Bottom line is this report is devastating and it's very credible. You know, normally reports like this, well, it's the think tank people or a couple of former generals or admirals, or it's even people that sort of sanitize it up the chain of command. In this case, they interviewed people anonymously, not just officers, but enlisted people, per enlisted personnel, and they did it in a way that wasn't through the chain of command. In other words, they got the unvarnished truth from the people who were supposed to be doing the job and responsible for winning America's naval battles. And what they said overwhelmingly is that we're not prepared. Part of it is resources, but a big part of it is, as Lucas just pointed out, it's the bureaucratic mindset and it's the focus on wokeism and you know, political correctness at the expense of war fighting. I mean, Bill, here's how bad it is. Training. It, it, officers who are going to surface warfare, you know, ships, they're going to ships. They're not being trained before. They're just sent onto the ships and said, here's your job. Oh, and by the way, here are 20 CDs. We want you to look at these. Over. They'll show you how to do your job. That's not training for war. A couple things. A ship burning in San Diego last year, that was a call to arms. Uh, you had two destroyer collisions in the Pacific back in 2017. That was four years ago. I don't know what you were thinking at that time, but I thought we rebuilt our military during the Trump years. Did we not? We did, but this is not something that happens in overnight. This is something that's taken 20 and 30 years to deal with. A lot of it is, is the legacy of the two terms of the, um, of the Obama administration, the defense cutbacks, but it's particularly that the burden of it has been borne by the U.S. Navy. You know, we have just spent 20 years fighting land wars in the Middle East. That's the Army, that's the Marines, that's the Air Force. We've not used the Navy. So as a result, the Navy's budget has been cut. The Navy's training has been cut. The Navy's maintenance and operations have been cut. The result is, as we look forward, what are the wars of the future? What's the threat of the future? It's going to be in Asia. It's going to be on the seas. It's going to be in the South China Sea. It's going to be in Taiwan. It's going to be maritime trade. And that's what we're not prepared for. And what President Biden has done, sadly, he's cut the defense budget, including the Navy budget. Here's the quote that sticks out to me in the journal piece. I guarantee you every unit in the Navy is up to speed on their diversity training. I'm sorry I can't say the same of their <laughs> ship handling training. How is that now working or finding its way in the U.S. military? Look, it comes at a price. The diversity training, the wokeness, the filling out the bureaucratic forms to make sure you've checked all of those boxes of, of cultural issues, they come at a cost of time and effort and training. And as a result of that, the focus is not on war fighting. It's not on winning wars. It's not on the, how you're going to have to adapt in modern warfare. It's on all these cultural issues. And, it's, and it's, what it's also done is it's taken that notion that you've got to be responsible for your own ship and it sort of bureaucratized it. So today, if you're, if you're in charge of a, uh, you're the captain on a vessel anywhere in the world, you've got the people in the Pentagon looking over your shoulder in real time. They've got the camera feed critiquing everything you're doing. And yet in modern warfare, what's the first thing that's going to happen in a modern war? Communications are going to go out. That captain on the deck of that ship, he's not going to be able to check and get his orders from Washington. He has to, on the spot, adapt. You don't want to okay. have to have the first time he does that in the middle of a war. Just to put a button on it, here it is from the journal. China will be the big topic when Carlos Sotoro, President Biden's nominee for Navy Secretary, appears before the Senate Armed Services Committee on Tuesday. Perhaps Mr. Del Toro, a former destroyer captain, can shake the Navy awake. As the new report notes in closing, there isn't much time for learning once war is underway. We'll watch for that. Katie McFarland, nice to have you back on our show today. Thanks.